On June 10, 1989, Bob and Tammy Kerr drove to the nearby Colorado Rockies to spend an afternoon hiking and picnicking with their children and half a dozen other relations. They planned to be home by dark, but they would not make it. Yeah. I've always liked the mountains and just a chance to get away with their family and get away from the city for a while. Everybody get together. We'll have a family portrait here on the rock. Bob, Tammy, get in there. Okay, everybody wave. Hi, Around two in the afternoon, Bob Kerr took the kids for a hike up the trail to the ranger's lookout tower on top of Devil's Head. On the way back down, Bob rested his bad ankle, while his nine-year-old daughter Melissa and 11-year-old niece Stephanie took a short trail to the Zinn Overlook. I just kind of sat down by a rock and uh, waited for, I, I would say, somewhere around 20 minutes or so, and they never come back. Assuming the girls had simply returned on their own, Bob rejoined his wife, Tammy, and the others at the campground. Uh, he said, I told them, you know, to go up there and take that trail and then come right back. I'll be waiting here for you. And so I, at first, I, I really, you know, didn't dream that they were lost. I thought, well, if they're just sitting and talking, they know that they should be back here by dark or we'll start getting worried. By 5 p.m., they were forced to accept that the girls were lost. Just down the road, the Arapaho Rescue Patrol, an all-volunteer high school age search and rescue team, was on a training mission, assisted by Bruce Fosdick. Yeah. We have two missing girls on Devil's Head, ages 9 and 11. I want to send a team up there right away. Right. Red flag it. Roll them. We had just completed the class. In fact, I hadn't even set down the materials from the class yet when Mr. Kerr arrived at our base camp. I started taking information down, and we got our mission base set up in the Devil's Head campground probably just around 8 o'clock. The three dozen searchers, mostly kids themselves, were quickly organized into teams, while the girls' aunt Glenna notified Stephanie's parents in Nebraska. I made the telephone call, very hard phone call to make. Wes and Stephanie are lost up in the mountains. All I could say was, oh my God, no, no. And uh, she said, well, don't rush out here. Just stay there and stay calm. I got a lot of searchers out there looking for them. She's the one you got to worry about the altitude. That's right. She's, she's, from, she's from Nebraska in the last 12 hours, and she's come up 7,000 feet. All right, we could have been respiratory problems on that. That's why the medical team has to carry oxygen out with them in the morning, so they're ready to pick her up immediately if they have to. Stephanie! Melissa! Your worst case is always that they could have fallen and hurt themselves or either, even taken a, you know, a 400-foot plunge. We are also worried about the temperature at that point in time was starting to drop that night. The other thing is, being two young children, would they separate? We'd have two problems. We'd find one, but we wouldn't find the other. Stephanie! I knew that for so long, if they kept walking, that they could be clear on the other side of the mountain. And I, you know, I didn't know what was over there or or anything, and I, I just, you know, I knew it was a, a big place for two little girls. It's the longest night I ever spent, you know, not, not being able to even really help. Uh, and I kind of felt responsible anyhow, because I probably should have went with them all the way. Pam and Gary Hartwell left for Colorado at dawn, their daughter still missing. I thought even if we're on the way, we'll be that much closer, we'll be doing something. This sitting was just driving me crazy. I just couldn't sit anymore. They had searched all night but found no sign of Melissa or Stephanie. Additional support teams were called in. Melissa! I was afraid they were hurt and huddled together somewhere where they can't be seen or or hurt so they couldn't holler for the people or something like that. When the helicopters came in, it, it was real hard. 
that's, you know, what I read about in the papers. I broke down and I said, it's, you know, it's just been too long, something's wrong. We were starting to get concerned that maybe the girls had uh, fallen into a uh, rocky crevasse or one of them had hurt themselves pretty bad and, and could not get out into the open where we could find them. Then Sheriff Greg Melton caught sight of something. My heart jumped up in my throat. I almost stopped breathing. And Roger turned the aircraft over so he could spot them also and confirm that that was the parties that we were looking for. It uh, kind of choked us up. Uh, we were really happy uh, to find them, number one. And then our next concern was uh, that they were OK. No roads in the area whatsoever. After 16 hours, the sheriff's chopper had located the girls, but it could not airlift them out. OK, can you advise when you're directly over them again? Directly over now. He was right above them here. I think we're a little closer right back over here. They would have to be rescued by ground teams. We had teams up on top of Devil's Head. There were three teams up there that were going to work the rocks and what have you that were within you know, half a mile of where they were located at that point in time. But they had to get into position, so we were about a half an hour still before we could get anybody into them. Well, that was, you know, a relief. It just feels like somebody took about a 50-pound ball off your shoulders. <laughs> it, uh, it felt good. I just held on to Pam for about 30 minutes. Well, it was about 15 minutes before we could even move to get back to the car and keep going again. It really was... It was terrific news. Give me your hand. Careful. It's nice to know you live in a country where people volunteer their time like that to help people. That's what makes the country run, really. Excited to see your mom? Yeah. I realize that, I mean, I can be a better person to show my family that I really love them, you know. Not to get in bad fights, because, I mean, if I get lost forever and nobody ever finds me, then my mom will know that I love her, and I told her I love her before. She'll never get to see me again, you know. In the privacy of an ambulance, Melissa's parents were reunited with their daughter and their niece before facing the media. You never know when you might lose a loved one, a close friend, through anything like this. And it's very special that you should let them know how you care every day. Never take anything for granted. Had enough camp. <laughs> I've always liked Melissa, but I got to really know her when we were all by ourselves and stuff. And how she was feeling, she's told me how she was feeling and stuff. And so I think, I feel that I know her a lot more. And <laughs> I like her more, too. Most people, I thought that if they got lost, you know, they'd never touch another mountain. But my dad taught me that you can climb more mountains even if you got lost on one. It doesn't really matter as long as you stick with your family this time.